Right, to say I'm joined by a new face on the block here for McCain's <laughs> TV with Andy Ward, obviously European star for Ulster, 120 caps for Ulster, 29 caps for Ireland as well. Andy, you look at the uh, the state of Ulster and the the whole phenomenon of Ulster mm. and what they have sold. It really is very special now, isn't it, up there at the Kingspan Stadium? It's a phenomenal setup down there. You know, it is world class. The 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 powers that be have have put together a fantastic package to go out and attract players to come and uh, and play their trade here here in Ulster. And uh, I've been down behind behind the scenes in terms of the training facilities, be at the gym and the training pitches and everything. And it's just from where I was, it's it's world class. So, Even uh, from where you were, I remember going back years and years ago when I was working on television over here and you'd be sent up to an inter-pro game on a Saturday in front of a couple of hundred people at Ravenhill and now yeah. look at it, you know, you can't get a ticket no matter when they're playing. Well, absolutely, you know, and I just think, you know, it's the success breeds success and, you know, over the last sort of five, six, seven years or more, the, you know, the Ulster team has done exceptionally well and it's, it, it's, it's down to a lot of the fact that, you know, that we've brought in some cracking players. People want to see world-class players playing. Um, and I think what that done as well is, is sort of inspired the local player to sort of raise his bar, raise the game. So consequently, the whole thing is the standards being risen, uh, and they've done exceptionally well. You know, they made semi-finals, finals of of, of major competitions, and, and unfortunately, just haven't quite got across the finish line. But being there, thereabouts. So here in Northern Ireland, we do like to get on the back of something that's strong and positive, and uh, and also rugby certainly in one of those categories. You talk about uh, not getting over the line yet. You know, we've done well in the old Heineken Cup, etc. You know, in the Pro 12. Mm. Pro 12 is still there. We have now the uh, Champions Cup, the European Cup. And I suppose, despite the latest victory, you know, they're, they're playing catch up, aren't they, to try and even qualify for there? Do you think maybe their chances are gone? Um, I don't know whether the chances are completely gone. You know, it's, it's sports a phenomenal thing and anything could happen on the day. However, they have looked at themselves an uphill battle straight ahead and uh, they need to go get an away win somewhere. Um, so it's possible, um, but I just think we've probably picked up a few injuries at the wrong time for us and uh, Ulster at the minute. We're not the stronger side as we have been in sort of previous seasons, so therefore we need to have every single player available, and at the minute we just don't have that. So therefore, moving forward, I think it is a bit of an uphill struggle. But, uh, you know, given that, I think Ulster are a very, very competitive side, and they'll have a go wherever they go, you know, and uh, I think Neil Doakes be a good thing into there as well. It's a bit of homegrown talent uh, leading the troops and uh, supported by Johnny Bell and Alan Clark and so forth. So uh, it's, it's good homegrown. You mentioned the likes of uh, Neil and his role too, and Ulster, yeah, people have to realise they can through a serious, serious uh, uh, turmoil, mm. you know, with 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 Humph leaving, you know what I mean, a new coach brought in as well. So really, it's been almost seamless. They've done remarkably well, despite losing play players to get on a course, less kiss to come back and control next season. Absolutely, you know, and it's, it's, it's been... As you say, it has been a phenomenal amount of turmoil. Most teams of, of at the level that these guys are at, I mean, this is one step below international standard. Um, and, you know, to go through the turmoil that they've gone through, as you say, it has been fairly seamless. And I think we all sort of have a tendency to forget this has actually happened and taken place. We've just rolled in and all of a sudden it's all been forgot about. And it's almost like David who and, and uh, who are the last set of coaches and so forth. Everybody's living in the now, which is a good thing, you know. Um, uh, it's good to look forward and, and I think Ulster Rugby is, is certainly moving forward. I think next year is going to be a big thing for them. They need to get some right players in, some key international players. Andy, whenever you look at Ulster, what we have at the moment, you know, you talk about maybe a couple of other players, maybe Doug Manta, which is a, it's a fantastic squad that we have. If all our players are fit to get out there, Ulster are a match for anybody. Oh, very much so, you know, and over the last sort of two to three seasons, we've seen some fantastic young homegrown players really come through. And the best part, the most exciting part for me, is the fact that these guys are in their early 20s, you know, 20, 21, 22 year olds. And, you know, they're knocking on the door of Irish rugby. So where that leaves Ulster in a very strong position moving forward over the next three to four years, these guys will start to mature, they'll develop their game and become more sort of world-class uh, individuals and that can only bode well for the Ulster. Um, the whole package is what they're trying to put together and the strength and depth of the squad gets deeper and deeper and, uh, and there's a lot of pressure from within and that's a good thing as well, you know, a strong side is a team that has lots of uh, competition within itself so, uh, and they're developing that a year on year. I have to say, I love the atmosphere at Ravenhill or Kingspan at the minute, you know, you go to a European night there and it's really bouncing, you know, particularly yeah. under the lights and all this, it's, it's very exciting atmosphere and mm. it's really captured what I would call the mood of the entire country. 
and then I look at the game, you know, and I know you played it at the highest yeah. level. The hits, they're like car crashes. It's very, 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 very physical now. Yeah, the impact, the impact now is just huge. And uh, I, for one, you know, I remember waking up and my day and feel like I've been run over by a lorry. I dare say these guys feel like they've been run over by freight trains. They're just breeding these massive players now, and it's all uh, size matters. There's no doubt about it, and, uh, and it's, it's very prevalent in rugby right now. And um, if we can get that perfect specimen, who's a big, athletic, speedy. Uh, with all the attributes, the silky skills and everything, well then that's the perfect player you're looking for. Also to have a couple of youngsters coming through who are very much starting to fill into those shoes, so uh, hopefully it'll all go well, but as you say, it's a, it's, it's a place to be watching, not to be involved in, I think, <laughs> but it's very physical. Whenever you quit now, you, you're involved in television and radio punditry with BBC, but also you, you're always a, a man with an eye for that development, you know, you've got your own mm. list of gyms, etc., and stuff like that. And do you see, is there too much emphasis now on these lads coming through, or is there is there a danger that people could be overtrained or whatever? It has to be a delicate balance, surely, and you would, you would there know is, best. Yeah, very it? much so. You know, when I see with my own gyms and so forth, people coming through, and it's it's just the mindset of a young fellow these days is bigger's better. Um, but they've got to bear in mind, especially here in Ireland, the the, the uh, the genetics of an Irish youngster is slightly three or four years behind, say, someone from the Southern Hemisphere, mm -hmm. um, say, some of the South Pacific Islanders and so forth. They seem to be uh, mature at the age of 21. Our guys have a tendency to sort of really mature at the age of 24. So from a physical perspective, we're trying to upload these bodies, and sometimes the bodies aren't ready for it, Thence and hence we get a lot more injuries than we would like to see. And a lot of the injuries are quite big, um, you know, there's Ian Henderson, big guy, powerful guy, uh, big future, but he's picked up a major injury. He's had a major operation here on his hip and so forth to rectify that. Now it will be sorted and so forth, but you don't like to see these young guys picking up these injuries. So they just need to develop the guys in the stages and at, at the right times. And I just, I'm just fearful sometimes that some of the youngsters coming into it, their bodies and their physiques, individuals, it goes down to individuals, aren't quite ready for it. So they just have to manage that very, very carefully. I know you're involved, you've got a whole range of gyms all over and you and open an arm as well, but people go to the likes of your gym and uh, hopefully people who are not going to go into car crash uh, incidents mm -hmm. with the guard or rugby, they're going to get the proper professional uh, uh, advice as to how they should uh, improve themselves. I presume that goes the whole way up to the very professional level at Ulster. Uh, very much so, you know, and, uh, and you know, I'm a firm believer in uh, obviously being down the roads of going to the gym and, and, and training away myself and, and being in a professional environment. So I just like to carry that back to my own gyms now and, and make sure that young guys and, and whoever it be comes, come into the gym and into that environment and learn technique. Technique is everything. Uh, Size doesn't matter when it comes to, we see 14, 15, 16 year olds come and pick up a big dumbbell and think that's the way forward, big is better, um, but then find they can only lift it three times. Um, so there's no development in that. So we learn, I just uh, very stringent on making sure techniques are perfect um, and therefore you'll grow bigger and stronger, faster with better technique. Now we move from Ulster as well, obviously, to the Six Nations defending champions, Ireland, under Joe Smith and uh, Les Kiss. And we've had a fantastic autumn series with the fact that we have three wins unbeaten. Mm. And I suppose the expectation levels are now through the roof and beyond the roof and up in the up into the stratosphere. I suppose that's a bit of a worry. But do you think the two lads uh, will deal with that well? I think so. I mean, you know, I've spoken to the Leinster players over the years and Joe Smith and so forth down at Leinster, what he achieved down there. And the guys absolutely love him. And the reason they love him is because he's so methodical in how he goes about it. He empowers the players to play their own game and tries and doesn't overcoach them to the point where they've lost their own individuality. Um, so that's a key thing for them. Um, and the feedback I'm getting from the national side is that's just progressed into the national setup. Um, so, you know, we've got a lot of talented players there. Uh, if he inspires them to play their own game, but within the parameters of his sort of uh, team culture, as it were, uh, I think they'll do exceptionally well, but I think one of their strengths is that Les Kiss and, and the guys have is their technical whereabouts. You know, we beat these teams in the Autumn Internationals, not through out-and-out -out rugby or, or, or beat them up in any way, shape or form, but I think what we did do was outsmarted them. And I think that's where Joe Smith and co are exceptionally clever and very, very talented individuals. And so if we can harness all that together, 
um, and they do their homework and everything is analyzed these days right down to the mm -hmm. referees. We have a look at a referee and say what way does he rule the scrum, the ruck, everything. So everything's done analytically, put together, empower the players and out they go and uh, it was proof of the pudding this autumn. It was fantastic. Interesting, I read a few uh, newspaper articles talking about uh, some of the Irish lads and they were saying, and you know, I suppose it doesn't always work out like this, that Joe Smith and Les Kiss brought them in and told them this would happen, that would happen, this would happen, and that's what would happen here. And it all worked out. You know, what you're saying is they're eye to detail as well. Mm. You, know, and you don't have to be, be totally physically beating somebody up if you know how to be cuter than them to win your match. Absolutely. I, I sometimes liken rugby to a game of chess. You know, you need to manoeuvre opposition and, and manufacture scenarios. And that's exactly what they have been doing. You know, the, you know do we want, ultimately we want to catch a ball from a line out and score in the corner. It doesn't necessarily happen right straight away. There's a little bit of manoeuvring going on and we're, we're, we're making sure that teams fall into the trap. And it's exactly what happened, especially against the South African. They were catching big guys, physical, powerful guys. I expected South Africa to overpower Ireland, but I didn't expect Ireland to outsmart them and outthink them. And so they caught and driving lineouts. No one touched it. The Irishman ran around the back, stole the ball and game on. And the South Africans didn't know what hit them, but it just completely pulled their game plan away. Um, so that these sorts of things, so they're manoeuvring and manufacturing scenarios down to their own uh, organisation. It's great. The Six Nations are uh, not too far away. You know, you always come up to the Christmas parade, you know, the Six Nations rugby. It's just only further on down the line. And the uh, defending champions, obviously, were ranked third in the world. And again, I say to you about the whole expectation level like that. We need to be careful about that, don't we? A wee bit, you know, but that's we love it here in Ireland. We, we love to jump on the back of something that's going exceptionally well. And, and, <laughs> and sport's a great thing, a leveller in this country. We all know that we've had a, a lot of issues over the years through more often than politics and sports. The sport's a great uh, bring it all together and let's, let's chill out over it a wee bit and, and uh, so forth. So, But listen, this is, this is, there is an expectation because the Irish provinces do exceptionally well and are very competitive at any level that they're in. So rugby, we take it to the next level up and we, there's an expectation there. You know, we've won silverware before, not long, long time ago. It was all recent and, and very, very current. So, uh, you know, we all love to walk away from a stadium when our team's won. I mean, the feel-good factor from that just is, it generates, it just puts a good spring in everybody's step. So people want more of that. So yes, the expectation is high. Um, with good reason. I mean, the players are good. We've got a good coaching staff now. Uh, it's building up nicely for a World Cup. Um, so, I, you know, I'd expect Ireland to be there, thereabouts, come, uh, you know, trophy presentation time at the Six Nations, for sure. Well, the Six Nations, you, you, and you threw in the world there as well, the uh, World uh, World Cup over in England. And, and we were doing a thing in RMI Rugby Club recently mm. where you said the price of tickets are something like £500 from the quarter final on, but yet, they'll, they, you know, it'll all be a sellout in England. Ireland, realistic chances for the World Cup, you know, sometimes we go, ah, Ireland World Cup, no, not really, we're the best of the rest type of thing, but mm. are we realistic? I think so, I think we, this year is probably, or next year, sorry, is going to be an absolutely fantastic opportunity for us, given the, what we've already said in terms of uh, you know, the methodicalness of our coaching staff, the uh, application from the players themselves and putting it all together. I think they'll do their homework on the players. They know who's in their pools. They know each uh, scenario, should we get beaten by here or win here or win the pool, we know who the stepping stones are to get to the final. So they would have done their homework uh, 10 times over. So um, I really do believe that they can be there, thereabouts come the end of it. You know, it's, it's an exceptionally tough, tough thing to win. There's some fantastic teams out there. Uh, most of them are always wearing black, um, <laughs> but you know, listen, it's going to be it, it's an exciting thing, and it's 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 across it's across the pond, as they say, and it's going to be a, a major spectacle. It's it was one of the top sort of three or four spectacles in the world to watch and so forth. So people are going to turn out in their droves to watch it for sure. They are because it's going to be a long time before it's back on in, in England, and it could be here too which is a fantastic bit as well. Wouldn't that be phenomenal if, if we got that in? It'd be absolutely Nothing. awesome, Logie. You know, it, it, what it would do for the sport, the country, the province, everything like that, it'd just be, it'll be monumental to say the least. But we have the great infrastructure now. We've got superb stadiums between rugby um, and also between GA. Um, it, it's going to be fantastic. And if they can seal the deal, it would be just mind-blowing, to be honest with you, you know, and it'll be, uh, it'll be worth a watching. 
I remember you as a player a long time ago and we started we used to do a bit of TV work together like that. And you clearly now enjoy the punditry, you're doing very well around the BBC with the likes of mm. Steve Watson and all of that. Yeah, no, it's good crack, you know, and the best part about it is you can you can give it large and then wake up the next morning not feel like you've been run over by the lorries we talked about <laughs> earlier. So uh, that's always an easy side of it. Uh, we don't always get it right, but you know what? It's it, it's a fun thing and I enjoy the sport. I enjoy the people that are around it and so forth. And like any sport, there's always places that are full of characters. So uh, to be involved with a lot of characters and have a bit of banter, it's uh, that's what it's all about. Andy, thank you very much indeed. A happy Christmas to you. And yourself. Cheers.